And I'm very honored to get to do the introductions tonight of the two women you are going to get to listen to, the two women who are going to participate in a conversation tonight about women coming of age. And each of them, through their writing, through their life's work, through their conversations in other settings, through their vision, have actually changed dramatically the place of women in our country and women in the world. And we wouldn't be in the places or have the opportunities like the one I have to be the first woman speaker of the city council if it wasn't for the work of the two women we're going to hear tonight. I give you Nora Ephron and Gail Collins. Um, this is Gail's book, and we're really doing this tonight. It's supposed to be a conversation, but, but I just want to start by asking you about this book. It's a fantastic book, and it's called When Everything Changed, and I would love you to tell us how you wrote it, why you wrote it, and uh, I know how long it took, because I remember. Yeah. <laughs> It's been We're a just going to put it yeah. like this so that it's sitting right yeah. here. Okay. Yeah. All right. You know, I actually started, it was a project, as it turned out, a two book project. Um, but it started in 1999 when we were preparing for the millennium. And I, I was at the Times. And, you know, when the Times prepares for anything, this is a big preparation. And so we had lists of the 10 worst wars and the 10 best cats and the 10 everything in the world. <laughs> And the magazine it did an entire issue on, well, little enough, women over the last thousand years. So it, I mean, at minimum, it was going to take an issue of the magazine, God. But anyway, they asked me if I'd write the introduction. And um, Jack Rosenthal was the editor then. When he asked me, he said, you know, I don't want to prejudice your theory about what this means, but I think you're writing about a win here. And as I wrote it, I never really thought before taking the really big view, that the stuff, the way people thought about women when I was born, about what they could do, about what their capacities were, about the difference between men and women, the women's weaknesses, and uh, their place in the home, mostly outside of public life, that those were the same theories that Western civilization had in 1500 and 1000, and that those things broke down in my lifetime that I lived at the time when all the conceptions of what women could do that had lasted throughout Western civilization broke. And that was just so amazing to me. It just completely knocked me out. So that was when I thought I really wanted to write that story. And I wrote a book called America's Women, which I thought was going to be that story. And it turned out like, you know, if you take an American history course and it's June, and you're only and on you World still War II. I yes. know. I never got past World War I, ever. I have no idea what happened after that. Me neither, yeah. <laughs> I want to ask you about your mother. I think mothers are a key to all of our lives, and I, I want to ask you a little bit about yours. Tell us about her. Um, my mother, uh, who's still alive, uh, is, uh, was wanted to be a journalist, actually, and she went to college for one year, and then she dropped out and got married because it was the war and everything, and um, then had kids really fast. And people often ask me about her and I think are hoping that there's some story about when I was discriminated against and she said, no child, go forth, you know, and fight for your rights. And that never happened. They would never, I mean, my parents were very conservative and they were you know, very young and they were in Ohio, but, um, they were very enthusiastic. I think because they were so young, they were just, and I was the oldest kid, uh, they were just so amazed that they had a kid, you know, and everything that I did, they thought was absolutely astonishing. And, you know, they would just, you know, what great sentence that was. That was the best sentence. I can't believe what a good sentence you wrote, which in the end turned out to be, I think, more empowering than being told to go out and fight your great battles, um, which, which they didn't necessarily do. So that's, and um, she was just really thrilled whenever I wrote stuff. And when did favorite. you become a journalist? Um, well, I started when I was in school, but frankly, it was partly about the fact that she wanted to be, but it was also partly that I realized in high school that there was no place in Cincinnati where I could get a degree in journalism and I would be forced to leave town in order to go and follow my dream if I made my dream journalism. So. 
I think that was part of it too, just the sense that if you wanted to be a journalist, you had to leave town in order to yeah. do it. So, what you wanted to do, I did. Yeah, yeah. yeah I always, I actually always thought I was going to be a great novelist, and that this would be just my temporary thing. That did I was you have do. any women journalists in your head that you had grown up knowing about? No, and you know, when we were in high school, it was it was just so pathetic, I swear. But they, um, a woman who had graduated from our high school who was the successful journalist who graduated for our high school, came to talk to us. And she wrote a column for the Catholic Telegraph Register in Cincinnati. And she was like, this was the highest imaginable thing you could possibly hope to achieve, was to have a column in the Catholic Telegraph Register in Cincinnati. Um, and that didn't seem even then to be that great a possibility. So. <laughs> Trust me. Um, okay. This is a question about uh, the good wives, Spitzer, Clinton, Edwards, mm -hmm. McGreevy, I guess you mean, mm -hmm. McJersey it's yeah. called here. <laughs> um, I think that's meant to be, I think the person who wrote this knew that that was funny. Um, but um, are they good women? I mean, I think the question is wh what, what do you think of all these marriages, all these mm. things being played out? Do you, do you think it's awful when a woman stands up next to her husband after he's been revealed to be? I think we've probably seen, Mrs. Spitzer, I think, did us a favor in that that was the end. I mean, that she was so clearly uncomfortable and stuck there that I think she's ended the standing by, even if you wanted to stand by your man, you would not physically stand by your man anymore. But didn't, it's so the, didn't that guy in the, in the Minneapolis airport come after that and that woman stood up next to him? Yeah, yeah, she was, <laughs> she, and you know, you never know about the, the dynamics of a marriage and, and what's going on behind the scenes, and which, you look now at Hillary Clinton and her decisions, and I remember at the time, the Monica Lewinsky time, everybody was so furious, at least in New York, with her for not walking out the door and screaming and beating him over the head. But you know, you, you come to see the total arc of their lives and their marriages, and it sort of makes sense, and I'm sure it makes sense to them. And you know, it's, if it works, that so the, the sort of tortured kind of McJersey wives, you know, these poor women who are just stuck there, you know, trapped in this miserable position are the ones that you remember. And so many of them now are, you know, so clearly making their own, I mean, and Mrs. Sanford in, in South Carolina too, she's pretty well, you know, put the nail on the coffin of the standing by. I hope, I yeah, hope yeah. so for their sake, because it's such a, it, it feels, it makes you feel so much worse for them than you even felt in the first place. Although you could see a point in which she would say, this is my final revenge against my husband. I'm gonna stand here and look pained this entire day. And they'll hate him even more by the time he's done. I mean, who knows? Who, who can knows? say? Well, who the heart knows, knows what the heart knows. Well, <laughs> yes. I think our lights are going up and down. Okay, right? so. anyway, this, is, this has been a pleasure for us. And thank you all so much for thank coming. Thank you so much for thank coming. You. Thank you.